find and yeah. so on because of the evidence it provides. It just simply doesn't say believe and that's it. It provides the mechanism to believe at the same time through evidence and support. Is there evidence? Can we see evidence that Mohammed split the moon in half? You and I know we haven't. But that's, not, but, that's, but, but, but that's not the evidence the Quran is giving us now here. Because some evidence are time bound, the people who witnessed it, people who witnessed the splitting of the sea, raising of the dead and so on, for them it was an evidence against them. They will have nothing in the day of judgment because that's a hujjah, it means a proof established against them if they disbelieve, because they, they could not explain any other way. I understand that. For us, for us, Quran provides loads more perpetual, universal evidence which is within our reach, rather than evidence which was time bound historically at that time. Tell me, some about, tell me about some of these evidences that are within exactly, our reach. Exactly, exactly. The Quran says if this book wasn't from God, you should be able to imitate it. Either the whole book of it, 10 chapters of it, or even a single chapter. The Quran even challenges and gives this falsification test that if it was from God, there's no way you can imitate it. But if it wasn't, you should be able to. And Quran doesn't just stop there. It says, like, if you really think it's not from God, you can't do it yourself, then go and seek helpers and supporters um, if, if you need to besides God. So, why is it that 1444 years or so has gone? People still are unable to meet this challenge of imitating. What do you mean imitate? Bringing something like the Quran. The Quran is in Arabic language, you know, on, a, on its own linguistic genre, in its own stylistics. Yet, this is different from ordinary Arabic speech. Uh, is this different from the speech of the pre-Islamic poets? It is different from the speech of the Sutsayas. It is different from the speech of the, the Quran. So the Quran is on a linguistic genre, absolutely unique in its meters, rhymes and stylistics. Of course, the content goes with it, with eloquence. If it was something, a human speech, made up by a, from a one human being or a collection of a human being, you should be able to imitate it. If I ask now Chad GPT, compose me a Shakespeare sonnet, it will do that straight away in 30 seconds. And someone who's a Shakespearean scholar will say, ah, oh, yeah, it's exactly with this criteria. These syllables and, the, and so on and so forth, they match. But if you ask ChatGPT, nicely enough, imitate the Quran, it would not be able to. I've got a whole more than one hour video on this, trying to help him out or it out to make and imitate the Quran and eventually he had to agree that he cannot because of the, the nature of the Quran yeah, and its stylistics. It's very specific, but could you, could you not say the same thing about the Bible? And if not, tell me why. The Bible doesn't even challenge anyone because it's human speech, human writings, human authorships, and you can compose something like the Bible. Yeah. Like, well, I, mean, I, don't, I don't put my you, faith in the you, Bible. Have you anyway. seen, for example, the writings of the Church of Latter-day Saints, Book of Mormon? Mm. Sounds very much, very much like the KGV. Very similar, right? So, but the Quran in Arabic language, which is the original language, nothing can be imitated. So one of the most powerful evidence of Islam being true Prophet Muhammad Islam being the true prophet, Quran being the, the divine revelation from Allah, is this inimitability challenge of the Quran. It's called tahaddi in Arabic. Linguistic inimitability challenge of the Quran. People have been trying for the last 1400 years and all they are now agreeing that, okay, even the scholars and saying, okay. Um, yeah, Muslim scholars yeah, well. yeah. Why is it so difficult? Sometimes I, we, we ask well, the orientalist scholars, why don't you attempt to try it? They don't even go near it because they know they can't. 1400 years is a tiny speck amount of time. We should give it millions, really. Who were the best people to imitate the challenge of the Quran? The people who at that time were the best in their language. The Arab poets during the time of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, contemporary people who were masters and experts in the language, who would live and die poetry, hang the best poem in the wall of the Kaaba, the Mu'allaqat. They were the best to meet the challenge. And they're the ones who considered and they said, This is not the speech of a human being. They're the ones who said this was magic, not the speech of a human being. So you don't need to give millions of years because more time you go, the less and less you'll be proficient in, the, in that language. People who were there living and eating, dying that language, they declared themselves, it is impossible to meet it. And that's why people became Muslim. Some people even fainted and died hearing the Quran because of the power of the Quran, the command of the power. Fasdaq bima tu'mar. We have reports like this, the Bedouin heard, collapsed, fainted, and he died. So Yuti mentions this. 
We don't appreciate this because we are reading translation of the Quran or we're reading the Quran, not how the Quran was in the milieu, in the social historical context, how it was. This challenge is only so easy that you only need to produce three lines in a particular style of a surah. Surat, for example, either Surat al-Kawthar, that because every surah, this is something that people don't appreciate and know. You miss this when you read translations. Every chapter of the Quran is unique in its style. No chapter is similar to the other. Every single chapter. Those Muslims, listen to it. The rhymes, meters, the stylistic, the usloop, they're all different. Even the story that's why that's why the Quran says, you know, bring a chapter like into it. Choose any chapter, because every every chapter is unique. So if you, Do you are idolize this book? We don't idolize it. We it say this is the like speech you do, of which is, this is an evidence. Completely against your religion, wouldn't it? The Quran says this is a book. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. The month of the month Ramadan is in which God revealed the Quran as a guidance unto mankind and a proof of that guidance. Oh, a proof of that guidance. So we don't idolize the Quran. We are sharing the Quran with you, which not only is a guidance from our God to how to live our life and how to understand why we are here, the purpose of our life, and to fulfill that purpose. At the same time, it gives us the evidence of that guidance so we can be content, we can be happy, we can be tranquil, we can be confident, we can be competent, and we can be sure that what we are following is something that is true. That is what the Quran is making people to interact in that way. The Quran doesn't simply say, all oh, you disbelievers, you don't believe in God and Quran, go to hell. It says, أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كَانَتَا رَتْقًا فَفَتَقُنَاهُمَا وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيْ أَفَلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ It says, do not the unbelievers see, have they not known? That the heavens and the earth was joined together as one piece, as one unity, singularity. And then, and then God parted it asunder. And then he, he made every living thing from water. And the Quran, the ayah, finishes by this. Would they then not believe? Look at how the approach of the Quran is. People who are agnostics and people who are non-believers. It addresses them. Oh, unbelievers. Oh, people who don't believe in Allah, in Islam, in Quran, in Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa did you know not did you not see that were you not already aware and then it gives you some information and at the end it says would you then not believe so that means the quran engages people's concern addresses them gives them evidence and then ask why are you not believing would you then not believe what was the evidence provided in this chapter in this particular ayah two evidence one from astro astrophysics and one from biology on the same breath Common origin of the universe, earth, sun, star, galaxies, everything was one singularity and there was separation. That's what we know today and that's what they will tell you today. Yes, we know, yeah, but that wasn't common knowledge. That wasn't known because we came to confirm knowledge of this through the redshift, through the universe's stars receding from each other, the expansion of the universe, Hubble's telescope, all that experiments, background radiation. Mm. And at the same breath, the Quran says every living thing from water. Look, the Quran was given to a prophet who was living in a desert, hardly any water to drink. And, and can I finish that statement and then you can ask on that? Okay. Just to highlight. I feel like I'm being preached to. Now, I want to give you evidence so that you appreciate the evidence. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. The Bedouins had hardly any water in the desert. They had hardly any rain to collect water or any pools and oasis to have water. And the Quran is saying every living thing from water. How did Prophet Muhammad Wasallam go deep down in the deep, you know, deepest oceans and find out the living being, they need water for their life. How, did he go down in a volcano underneath the, the deepest volcano? He went down into the oceans and found living animals. That he didn't. Water. How can he make a claim if he didn't? How did he go in space somewhere else? What did he claim? He says every living thing is from water. Without water, there's no life. That's why scientists will tell you on Mars, if you want to think about this life, was there any sign of water? 
in any other planets you go to were the signs of water. That's how we are. So Quran gives you two information, one from astrophysics and one from biology. Would you not then believe? Interesting. How's your Ramadan? Very good, thank you. You hungry? No, not yet. So you eat before sunrise and when the yeah. sun sets? So our day starts in, in a day is sunrise to sunset. It changes during seasons because it's a lunar calendar. Sometimes now 7.38 today is when the sun is going to set and we will break our fast and have iftar. And it will just go slightly more and more and more. And more. Some other month, some other year, it might be 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and so on and so forth. Sometimes it could be even earlier because of this cruise. So we see the whole variety of it. Do you know why we fast? Let me ask you some questions. I just wanted to check how your Ramadan was. but yeah. Good, thank you. Ramadan is okay for me. Um, so in terms of the moon splitting in two, yeah. don't you find it odd how there's no evidence that we can... I'm not an astrophysicist, no. so maybe there shouldn't be I don't find evidence. it odd. No. I don't find it odd. Now, I don't know enough about the subject. How long, how long have we been speaking right now, roughly? Half an hour? Okay. Right. Did you see the moon, something happening to the moon? No. You didn't even look at it. So how do you expect an, a temporary event that was done to show someone some evidence miracle and then it was joined back together that people will be looking at the moon and say, oh, we expect so many people around the world because none of you are looking at the moon. I don't mean that. I mean... No, no, what I'm saying is to expect evidence of a moon splitting is like asking you now, oh, why didn't you look at the moon? What happened to it? Because you're not concerned what's happening with the moon. So you don't expect people to look at the moon and observe whether it's split or not. What we are saying is, this is a miracle that happened. Allah gave the authority to Prophet Muhammad to split the moon. It split and it joined back together. It doesn't have to be leaving a mark with a crack. It can be exactly how it was to begin with. So you're saying like, oh, we can go to the moon now and we can find a crack. No, you don't have to, because Allah can bring it back together without any cracks remaining. This was an evidence for the people then and those who witnessed it. Do you know what was their reaction? No. Quran records it. They just simply said it's magic. Because they could not explain any other way, because they could see that it's not rational. Because two options. You have to believe that this is a miracle and accept him a prophet. If you don't want to accept that, you have to come up with some other theories. You say, oh, it's magic. You, you, you've mesmerized us through magic. However, he was a normal man, correct? Ordinary human being like was, but entrusted with the duty of revelation to convey the revelation to everyone else. So even though he ate and drank and so on, but God made him, molded him, developed him, programmed him to be the best of human beings in his best. character, in his character, in his attitude, in his morals, in his manners, so that he can be the role model. Uswatun Hasana. So he's the best, but we can't idolize him. Yes. No, you cannot so worship him. Yes, and I got a no. No. Yeah, you, you cannot idolize him. No. You should idolize him. You oh, cannot. Oh, you, oh, you shouldn't. You yeah, cannot yeah. idolize him. Whoever worships Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi is going to go to hell. Yep, absolutely. But we love him. We love him more than ourselves, more than our parents, more than everything else. This is the love we have of our Prophet It sounds like idolization if you say he's the best and you love him more than your parents. We love our Prophet more than ourselves. Do you know why? Because he's worthy of our love. If there is a creator, would you not want to love him? We love our creator because he's worthy of our love. Why more than Moses or Jesus? Jesus, is it just because he is the last prophet that he is better? God excels one prophet from the other. This is up to him. God says, Tilka rusulu faddalna ba'dhum ala ba'd. God raised and elevated or gave faddal, some blessings, one prophet of the other. For us, we say, we make no distinction. We make no distinction between them. You make no distinction. We make no distinction. God makes that distinction. So if God says, Musa, Allah spoke to him directly. We say, yes, he is the one who spoke to God directly. And God, if God says, Ibrahim Islam, Allah took him as Khalil. Yeah, we say, yes, he's been preferred. Even with this epithet, Khalilullah, you know, a friend of Allah. We don't make a distinction. God does. So there's no idolization. We give the description, the attributes, the role, what Allah has given. We don't go beyond that. We don't say even about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
We cannot say about Allah something that he hasn't said about himself. That's our limit. We cannot speak about Allah that he hasn't spoken about himself. 100 descriptive words, right? The names that Allah has provided, we can oh, use, we'll use them. We cannot use one of the names of Allah is, Allah is energy. Yeah. Yeah. Allah is an expert. Can I ask one more question? Yeah. I don't want to take up all the time. No, no, take your time. Question. We're more than willing to, uh, uh, you know, answer your question so that at least you can appreciate yeah, and, and come, to, come to Islam wholeheartedly. Inshallah. So, <laughs> maybe I'm getting there, who knows? Um, Inshallah. Muhammad, he, did he write the whole Quran? No, he was unlettered. He could not read and write. He was illiterate, I heard. Yeah, so, he could not write. So the Quran came to him through Angel Jibril, who revealed it in his heart. And he told his companions. And he recited. He memorized. He got people to memorize. And he got people to write down, those who could write down. And he got people to recite back to him so that he knows that they've written it correctly. Is that considered a miracle, the fact that a normal man can memorize the entire Quran? No, I mean, men, um, I know many people do it, right? Memorize the Quran, yeah. Memorizing text is not something miraculous on itself, but, but... I would say it's a miracle for a, a sheep farmer, or whatever he was, or a trader, to sit down in the cave and memorize this, this thing from an angel and then, and then relate to his companions perfectly. But it wasn't all at work. And he's like, a normal man. I think, Isn't that hard think to believe? it was all at work. No, it wasn't like the Quran wasn't just instilled at one point in time, all completed. It was in, the, in, in the, peace it was over, it was it was piecemeal, 23 year period. In a period of 23 years, Quran was revealed in a piecemeal, and then it was joined together because God says in the Quran, "Inna alayna jamaahu wa Qurana." For us is the gathering and the recitations. So even though some parts of the Quran was revealed first, it's not the beginning of the Quran. The surah, the chapter that was revealed in the Quran, "Iqra' bismi Rabbika alladhi khalaq." It's not in the beginning, first chapter of the Quran. Does it say why it would shuffle these orders around? Does it give reasons? Because God has revealed the Quran with the needs of the people at his time. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, but the Quran also came, also came for the people at all times. You say so his collectively, people. His people? Because it was just Muhammad alone, right? He's not in a desert. He was with community. So he has people, but those aren't his, his people. tribes. Those are Jews and people. No, 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 no. The Quraysh, his community, and the, the broader community, the Jews and Christians from the Hijaz and elsewhere in Medina, broader the whole world. So the, we, we, we are his ummah. We are the followers. You can be part of his ummah. I, I know that. So when you say it was for the needs and wants of the people at the time in that specific region, so are those the chosen people of... God sends revelation initially to the people and reforms them and them brings like them and brings them back as well. This happens to all communities. But the Quran, even though it started with Prophet Muhammad وسلم, because it came to him as a messenger and a prophet and to his people, but his mission was not restricted to his people. Allah says in the Quran that he has sent Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to be not Mercy. But as a mercy to the whole of mankind. Mercy to the whole of mankind? Yeah. When, it's, it, historically speaking, why did the Umayyad and the um, Abbasid dynasty caliphate spread so far and wide into territories that were before non Muslim? That's, how is that helping for you? Let's talk about Prophet Muhammad. That's helpful. But they're caliphate. When, when the Quran entered in the hearts of people, and, and the people were carrying this Quran in their hearts, they wanted to take it forward. So what are the Abbasid and the Umayyads and the Fatimid and, and, and what are, they took the Quran forward to the people. They, political and ideological. Yeah, yeah. They, they took the Quran to the people. So what are the Quran? It depends. Look, if you have a community who has become an obstacle to receive the revelation of, of the Quran. Like this country the Quran, this city. The Quran at that time, Islam provided three options. So 10 minutes? Inshallah, inshallah, 10 minutes. Yeah, we have to go in 10 minutes, inshallah. Three options. Let us come to your land and we tell the people, show the people, let the people know about Islam. No problem. Okay. Condition number one, okay. no issues. If they accept it, that's fine. If they don't accept, then there are other conditions like, okay, do you want us to open up the land so that people can hear it? Because you have made an obstacle for the people to hear about the truth. 
about revelations, God's final revelation. Yeah. So we need to remove that obstacle. Sounds, so, for, sounds forceful. You no, have to force removing, upon them removing, the ability to hear the revelation Removing itself. the obstacle. Yes. Not removing people the obstacle. Yeah. Not no, forcing... Hear, it's, it's look, removing the obstacle, yeah. not forcing the people. Those obstacles, still not forcing on them, become a Muslim and become believe in the Quran. No, because they have become an obstacle to God's message to reach to people. I get look, that. And look, it was, it was a time this. before freedom of religion, which I guess we if, all disagree with. No, 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 no. We actually <laughs> we disagree. We, we're shaking your head. Was it a time? No, no, no. Let's go back to the point. What he explained, what's your explanation for the Quran? Do you think it's the word of God? Or do you think Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Me? Then we can move on after. Me? Yeah. I'm not Muslim, no. No, no, I'm not saying you're not Muslim. Based upon what Baba uh, Mansoor mentioned, what do you think about it? Well, we're on a whole different yeah. point of conversation. So, here. look, Islam, uh, Islam can spread and has spread politically yeah. with might. Yeah. No one denies that. No one denies but Islam spread as a political entity with or without might. But Islam as a religion, as a theology, as a belief system did not spread by force ever because you cannot force people to accept Islam. Mm. I cannot put a gun on your head and accept Islam because you can buy... No, you can't. You can't. Ma making Christians and Jews pay an additional rent. No, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa. One at, one at a time. The, wait, wait, wait. You mean uh, the one that's less than the one we have to pay as Muslims? Yeah. Jizya. You know, Jizya, Jizya you have is to, a political yeah. tax they have to provide to be a citizen of the Islamic State so that the Islamic State will guarantee their rights and their... Security. Well, security. The Islamic State comes to you. It came to Algeria and Morocco no, 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 and question, Spain. Question, question, so therefore, your city, which was if like you are getting yeah. oppressed by your government, yeah, if you're getting oppressed by your government, and there's a government from outside that wants to free you from this oppression, wouldn't you see this as a good thing? Oh, yeah, Even if you don't recognize this oppression, yeah. Okay, from a Muslim perspective, we see that if a government objects to us uh, preaching the message of Islam, which is the best interest for its people, without us forcing anything, but at least preaching it, then they are uh, they are oppressing you, and we need to. It's upon on us to free you from this in oppression. Your opinion, yeah, okay, that's fine. And this is and, and it's an, uh, no, no, the Jews would disagree. No, 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 that's, no, no, no but fact, that's not the point, brother. The Muslims in, in, the, in the land, when the when they when they can no longer sustain uh, the protection of the Jews, they did not imp they did not put they uh, cannot take the Jews here from them. Yeah. Do you know what the Jews said? We get persecuted by Christians. We want you to come. I know they came to Morocco. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I thank but, you for that one. But that's not only the point. One more, one more question. I was in Lisbon recently. Let me finish this Jizya point. Yeah, bro. The point of Jizya is what. In how do governments uh, like function? Yeah, Taxation, yeah, right? Yeah. In the past, they didn't have income tax. You had in the Islamic state, you had jizya for non-Muslims, and you had zakat. Zakat is higher. If anything, the discrimination is against Muslims, not against non-Muslims. Not just that. Uh, you and your mom and your your sibling are like the women in your family and the elderly all get taxed under jizya. Elderly uh, people who are not of military age, women uh, do not get do not get jizya. So not only is it a more uh, what you call beneficial system for you, it's also a more merciful system for you as a non-Muslim. And even you, as a military age person, could not pay jizya and just say that if the country goes to war, you have to go to war. So that's the point. Is it, it, you don't you're not a Muslim. You don't want to fight for the sake of Allah. Therefore, you you don't, you don't want to be forced to this, and Islam gives That's you the option interesting. to pay out of it. So it's not discriminatory; it's actually in your favor. Yeah. That's Did very you? interesting, and I yeah, I yeah, completely yeah, hear yeah. that. My comment, comment about Jizya was a small caveat. No, but you raise an interesting point about how I would have to fight for the country, yeah. for the Islamic Empire. But Islam has 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 come as a force into my land. Let's say, yeah. for example, Turkey. So okay, why how should is, this Turkish man I'll now you, I'll, fight I'll for the Islamic you, right. Okay, how about America? Do oh, you know there's conscription in America at some point? So they have the draft, right? right. So what about, what about the First Nations people that had to go through the draft? Well, in the age of empires... No, no, I'm saying that in, in the age of empires, empires, you either conquered other people or you yeah. conquered, you got conquered. There was no, there's no neutrality, there's no Switzerland. That you don't get to just sit there. Yeah. So you either conquer or get conquered. We don't live in that right now, so we don't need to have But in that time, Islam needed to preserve itself because there was other forces that were trying to eat it in the same way. So the difference is when other forces would come and conquer Islamic lands, they would burn, rape, pillage, destroy the lands and suck all the resources and kill all the people. On the other hand, under Muslim empires, we've had many... No, 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 I'm not saying by necessity. I'm saying we've had plenty examples where Muslims and Christians and, uh, and Jews lived not only in peace, but Islam actually provided 
plural legal system. Something that the UK right now would laugh at if somebody tried that. To have Sharia courts here and to have a Jews, Jew, a Jewish uh, tri uh, tribunals. And stuff. Exactly. What do you mean? That's intolerance. Where's the freedom of religion, brother? I want my I want my divorce. I want my Islamic divorce laws as a as a Muslim because man. Because this country had constitution and uncodified rules and regulations. Yeah, before oppressive. It, what do you mean before? Okay. Well, let, no, let me no, just. Let me you can be let me, no, no. But before or after? Is it oppressive or not? Is the, the Islamic you legal system come tells here you and bring your own laws? Well, that's not oppressive. No, 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 no. No, no. Doesn't matter. What if? What about British people who are Muslim? What about British people who had their whole ancestry who are British? What about them? Do they not get the right to live by their... This is a secular country. If you want to live in a religious society... It's not a secular country. It's a, it's, it's, it's a secular country in some to ways. Let's not talk about England. What I want to learn from you... I'll tell you something. You didn't sign a social contract. What I want to learn from you... What I want to learn from you... I want to learn from both of you. How is Islam spreading now? With force? How is that? It's, no, I mean, majoritively right. in a lovely, peaceful way, as the gentleman here. Yeah, because yeah. there's no age of empires anymore. Right, yeah. so so that is what you need to understand. Why are people accepting Islam? Do you know in UK, talking about the UK, the majority... Know, I'm, I'm, a tough, I'm a tough cookie to crack. Majority but, of uh, yeah. people becoming Muslims <laughs> are educated women. Every cookie crack. Yeah? Yeah, eventually. <laughs> three, three quarters, 75% of people becoming Muslims are women educated. And they're probably scared for their lives because this place is full of crackheads and degeneracy, but it doesn't mean... No, no, but why would you say that? Why you would should have really, told why those feminists who are here earlier on that they're scared. Because really 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 right, that, that's, that, that's a whole different eco-climate of political and economic what? stuff. But I'm talking about British women. Who, who knows British. why this country is going to British women. Why are British women accepting Islam? The reasons I just told you. Probably. What? They're afraid? Probably. What evidence? What is this probably business? You I don't want to see this probability. Do you not agree that they are moving because they are scared on no, the streets? No, I just went to university. They did a study. 60% 60, 60 of the rivers are white women. Yeah, British women. I accept that. Yeah, that's true. So why are they why, why are they accepting if it's not like for example for the reason I just said? What is it? You keep asking me the same question. What is the reason? Probably because they see the crackheads and degeneracy in the streets. But the reason for that is multifaceted and can be. I yeah, the reason for that, that is know. that there's no system that's been able to provide the socio-economic benefits. Uh, the financial benefits, exactly. the material well, benefits that Islam provides. No, no, no. Don't you dare say if we look at the Muslim majority countries. You're looking at. I was going to say. No, no, no. Right, right, right. Well, right. No, no. I was going to say. Because if you preempted, I, I think that you're too smart. Right. Preempted. Because you were too. Oh, it sounds like a you look, No, no, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, you look too smart to, to try to do a historical snapshot of a hundred years and base Islam off of that. Because you know, for for 1400 or but you know 1300 years, Islam was either the superpower in the world or one of the superpowers in the world. And Islam flourished. All of science flourished under Islam, of not course, in your. So course. that's what I'm saying. I agree. So, I agree. so we. So just because the last Roman hundred years course, we're getting bodied because uh, our resources are getting plundered and our lands are getting bombed and our people are getting uh, what's it called defunct because of the education system is getting robbed. Yeah, that's fine. We could say that, but that's why what's it called Islam still spreads because it has such potency and such truth to it that it transcends you cultural boundaries. It transcends race. Me yet fully, personally, you. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't think you're that well read on the subject <laughs> that the Islamic Golden Age was fundamentally Islamic and not Arab, Baghdadi, no, 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 Damascus. No, 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 why women are turning to it. Did uh, you ask those women? Exactly. Yeah, you no, no, no. You should do that. Should do because no, we, we all know the reason. No, no, you no, don't. don't. You don't. You don't. No. You don't. I do. You you're saying no you don't. You're preemptive. Oh. You don't. You're preemptive. Yeah. You're preemptive. Yeah. You're preemptive. Yeah. British Empire. British Empire. Yeah, so no, look but, but it's not unique to Islam either. Uh, it British seems to be because unique. people are... Uh, no, it's it's quite unique. What is not unique? Okay, I'll tell you why. Islam has the worst marketing in the world of any ideology ever, probably in the last hundred years yeah and yet it is the fastest growing religion in the world that should that the, subhanallah that's alone should get you to think a little yeah, bit right? you know you're speaking about the uk the with women yeah. and yeah. going you know religiosity is growing among sorry. women regardless of it being islam you're sorry repeat. spirituality and religiosity yeah. is right. growing well, there's amongst one women in uh, that's Britain. not, it's not that's just, true maybe that maybe that's the not, case in the uk but uh, just, on the worldwide and, and it varies per religion as well but it's not just unique to islam that it's growing no no no. that's actually is unique 
you, it's even not. even it's Pew not. says that it's and not great rates of like interest in things like astrology and other spiritual beliefs other religious be beliefs astrology? are yeah. growing are growing amongst women it's, it's, no but I didn't say only just, women but we didn't we just had we had a tangent and, about and, women and, and yeah, unless, in general. I, unless I've come in on the wrong point what I heard yeah. initially was you talking about the growth of Islam amongst women in the no, 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 oh, that was sorry that's not just the so Islam in general is the fastest growing religion but the point I was making yes I was not only that spirituality is on the decline actually the point I was making the reasons why women, educated women, are accepting Islam is not because by force, because through their education and intellectual query, which got satisfied by observing, reading, studying, reflecting on Islam and the Quran and life, the Prophet. And they then, they then, they then, they then accept the socio-economic factors going on behind it that make people turn to religion. Exactly. For example, where are the highest rates of religiosity in poor countries with lower rates of education? Let's talk about UK women. Is that happening with Islam? No, no, no. In countries in Southeast Asia and Africa, okay. where there's lower, the question there's, is, there's lower economic security, there's political instability. In UK? So in UK? And, and there's, there's less education in UK? around the scientific method. In UK? No, we're not talking about the UK. No, no, but you I am talking about the UK. Muslim religious yes. communities and, 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 and in all as, the developed as, countries. As I pointed out, yeah. it's not just Islam that is growing amongst women it's, in the UK. But that's it's not... That's the point. Really but, that but that's not the point I am discussing anyway. It's various religious let me, let me help you out because he came late. On the decline, bro. Okay, I'm gonna help yeah, you out. Yeah, Protestantism. I don't want to. I am. No, no, no. Can I? Can I? Can I help you in this? Way? You came. Other, other let me help. Okay, give me a second. Give me a second. No, because Catholics and Protestants aren't the same thing. It's my name. It's my name. Change your name as well. Wow. It's my. What's your name? Why? Why are other religious and spiritual beliefs in this country? Yeah. So what we were saying, Oscar. What we were saying, women in this country. If you ask them, can you guarantee the safety of home? Yeah, let's guys, continue, let's continue. Let's continue. When are you leaving? When are you leaving? No, we're, we're oh, we need bit. to go. What time is it? No. Okay. So we have to go and break our fast.